find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at SliceOnBroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's that time of the week where we get techie, get geeky. It is the awesome cast. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron in the Mayhem Studios in Pittsburgh, PA. Ready to get with it and fix my hair. All these headphones are doing weird things to my hair. I'm going to shave my head again. Don't tell my wife. Yeah, she's in the room. <laughs> also with me oh, in another part of Pittsburgh, uh, fighting the T traffic, having problems with his phone. Finally, he's bathing in the sweet, sweet Wi-Fi's of his home <laughs> office is John Chichilla. Yeah, but I can't. Unfortunately, I can't use handoff in my house. Oh, no. Why? Which is, which is another gripe I have of the week. So I'll, oh, I'll get no. to that. In the, we'll get to that. There's a lot of Apple news, of course. There's a lot of Google news. We'll touch on all that. And we'll, of course, touch on all our awesome things of the week. And, of course, uh, this edition of the Awesome Cast. Uh, wait, no, that's the thing that we read before the show. That's weird. Uh, <laughs> you can join us here live every Tuesday at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, Live.sorgatronmedia.com or check that link over at awesomecast.net where you can find all of our shows contacts um check out stuff that we like we have some amazon links over there on stuff we've talked about on the show that you can pick up including the battery that survived a cottonmouth king's mosh pit at the gathering of the juggalos uh this past summer you can also hit us up on twitter at awesome cast or awesome cast at sorgatron media.com we're also available on itunes youtube stitcher and uh, uh spreaker as well as iheart radio anywhere you want to watch or listen and uh the little little tidbits we put up on youtube as well share those around some of the reviews and stuff that we do uh also want to put a quick plug out for extra life i will be doing that right here in the studio we'll be uh, i'll be over on the couch we're going to set it all up all the consoles will be laid out and we'll be live streaming right here here at live.sorgatronmedia.com all that stuff with our friends from insertcointobegin.com it's for a great cause it's for St. Vincent's Hospital uh, the Children's Wing up there in Erie, PA it sounds like they really need it uh, to get some upgrades in there get some some uh, new video games for those kids that are you know having to deal with uh, you know having to deal with all their illnesses up there um, you know a lot of attention goes to Pittsburgh uh, so let's let's go to some of the more needy of, 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 of hospitals that could use it uh, uh, so uh, check that link over there at awesomecast.net um, or over at sorgatronmedia.com. And please donate and watch us here this weekend starting October 25th at, I believe, 10 a.m. is when we're going to kick it off. Uh, I'm going to try to get my NES working so I can play some Sesame Street ABC uh, since Chachi got the first donation in for that one. So, um, And also, also, I was thinking about this. Open invite. If anybody wants to come over and uh, play play video games with me and help me through this marathon uh you know where the studio is a lot of you uh, uh, uh guests or uh that are usually with us chill if you want to come over we can we we can play some some i don't know blitz or something you know if you're if you're free saturday i'm just looking for friends <laughs> to, to get uh, yeah, me through I'm this able, i'm gonna be able to do that <laughs> so we figure we, uh, we got this couch well, let's, let's let's use it and let's have fun with that and it's for a great cause um not as big of extravaganza as we do for chachi plays of course but you know something fun that we're doing with the guys and they're all going to be on a hangout together with us and everything so we're gonna have a lot of fun and keep each other propped up digitally we can't go get bobby fj tank he's all the way out in johnstown for instance uh so let's get with it um with our awesome thing of the week chilla i think i'm gonna let you go first and then i'm gonna tell you afterwards why i was wrong <laughs> So my awesome thing of the week is, and I'm guessing it's pronounced Zim. It's actually X-I-M. Um, it's an app that's cross-platform made by Microsoft. Um, it's a photo sharing app, but it's not a photo sharing app like we would typically think about your average Instagram or Facebook or, or whatever, um, or Dropbox. It, it actually allows you to kind of sit with a group of people and everyone can put Zim on their device. So it's obvious it's made by Microsoft. So obviously there's a windows phone version, there's an Android version um, there. And they, they just recently launched the iOS version. Not sure necessarily why it took them so long, but 
what Zim allows you to do is you can take pictures from, from pretty much anywhere, whether it be your camera roll, your Instagram, your Facebook, Dropbox, OneDrive, etc. Um, and you can kind of cast them to all the other devices. And as you scroll through these pictures, as you scroll through the pictures, the other devices stay in sync with what you're looking at. So I don't, I don't know if you've ever been in a restaurant and you're, you're, you'll be like, hey, check this out. And a bunch of people either have to huddle around a, a, a five-inch screen or a four-inch screen or a six-inch screen, depending on the size of your phone. Or you end up handing your phone to someone and then they start rummaging through it like it's the lost and found. Or, um, or, or changing your uh, language to Spanish. Yes. Why, is Siri or, or Espan- reading- Why am I Siri es- en Espanol? Renaming renaming your contacts to famous Star Wars characters, or making Siri them. refer to me as the Booty Master. <laughs> so, so I, I really like the concept. I, I I think it's great. I I've not gotten to test the app out yet, unfortunately. Um, Crazy Krause and I were talking about playing around with it someday at work this week. Um, the other thing you do is when you share out, you, you use your phone's contact list. So you can either send via email or a phone number, and then they get the link, and then it, it pops them right into the app. So I, I think it's a I think it's an excellent idea. It kind of builds on one of the prior reviews I did or, or tips around um, photo album sharing um, in iOS, but this is obviously cross cross platform. And um, that this they only stick. A, obviously, it's using the cloud to then push the content up and, and bring it back down. Um, but the they only the content only stays up in the cloud for a short period of time. So it's people can't necessarily get back to the content you showed them. Awesome. Have you downloaded this and poked around? It? Like, is this something that you guys have to be? Kind of in person to use, right? Yeah, you would be in person to use this much, just just like showing pictures off mm-hmm. off your phone, right? It's it's not like Facebook where I'm going to post something and let all my friends see it. It's it's more meant to be. We're all in the same physical location. So, for instance, I'll walk you through mm-hmm. a set of pictures or photos. So I've been able to just you know download it. It'll it logs in like I, I logged into Instagram. Um, I can actually look at videos that are actually mine and ones that I've just simply liked. Um, and I guess it, I guess you sync over from there or I select it. And so let's say, uh, do they have to have, does the other person have to have the app? So what happens is I think if you send it to another person and they don't, I think it'll probably prompt you to download it, but yes. Okay. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I, I just sent, I said, like, this picture uh, from IWC this past weekend that I like from the great Dan Hoven, Daniel Hooven. If you want to go mm-hmm. check him out on Instagram, he's a really good photographer. Um, I just sent a text over to Missy, apparently. What, what are you getting over there? Uh, did you get a text from me from Zim? I, I did. You did? And what is it? what does it kind of push you through to? Something confusing? Not really. It loaded. Oh, it did load. It actually did load the uh, the, the slideshow. Yep. So you're on that slide. Oh, and it just popped up on my screen. Um, it's, uh, it's a slideshow. Uh, apparently, if I add pictures to it, you'll it'll reflect that over there. Yeah, and it told me that you left. It told me that I left. So it's actually giving her pop-ups, I guess, in browser, in an in a HTML app. Ah. I joined. And I've joined. Yeah. So so it, it's not you don't even have to have the application on everybody's phone in order for this to work. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I yeah, thought it was a pretty it was a very interesting concept of otherwise using using the the cloud. What what was that? I'm sorry. What was that, Chilla? I was I said it was it's a very interesting concept of using the cloud to keep everyone in sync when trying to view something. Well isn't that what I mean, uh, Go ahead. And she said it is prompting her to install the app, but it was mostly like it looked like it was reacting. Like there were there were animations on the screen saying that I had left, and that's the same as they were for me when she arrived with the little icons and stuff. Um, I mean, this kind of you know 
like I said, with them in the cloud, they want to push more stuff. So we're using their cloud services, right? So, right. and obviously, you know, the ideal situation is going to be us using OneDrive to do this, right? Yeah, and, and what I'm thinking about too, where this would be really nice is if you if you were in like an auditorium giving a presentation, mm -hmm. and you had everyone go to this, where maybe maybe there's no that'd be awesome. There's no like way back in the back of the room, right? Maybe you can't see the screen or the screen's not big enough, whatever. Throughout the presentation, you can now cast this to all the screens on the on all the devices and kind of scroll through. And obviously, the, the device you're controlling, you're going to be sharing that screen and projecting. But it, I think it would give everyone in the audience the capability to then move forward. And I'm trying to log in and download it right now um, to, to kind of see what you're looking at and, and walk, walk them through something. I, I think it's I, I think not only for photo sharing, but if you if you take this to the next step and start to really move it forward. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, now, Chilla, this is the part where I tell you you were right. <laughs> uh, what was I right about? You were right about Fire Chat. I, I, I thank you for reminding me that I was so negative about this when it first came out. So explain to everybody what Fire Chat is again, because you're, you're more in tune with this, so, obviously, since you're the one that's correct. So Fire Chat, <laughs> Fire Chat is is a chat app, um, and, it, and it's grown. I haven't. I, I haven't kept up with it completely. I jump in there every once in a while. But the original intent was you launch Fire Chat and everyone gets thrown into a giant chat room where you can interact with everybody that's using Fire Chat. Right. Now, the interesting part about Fire Chat is obviously if you have an internet connection, you're going to be in this chat room with everyone. If you don't have an internet connection, it'll actually... Um, hop from device to device. So anyone within a certain amount of distance, whether it be Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, whatever type of connection, it's actually going to almost like telephone game and it's going to broadcast to everyone. So I, my use cases for this when it, when it launched were if you're at a remote location and it's something like a large concert or festival. Where like maybe a Burning Man? Poor, poor internet connectivity. <laughs> You could actually jump in this room and be like, "Hey, I'm looking for so and so," that kind of thing. And I could, I could really see this taking off during any kind of natural disaster mm -hmm. where certain services are down. Being able to reach out to others. I mean, I, I don't want to go all. Walking and and dead, this goes. This I think this goes along with our conversation a few a uh, few weeks ago when we talked with uh, Josh Lucas down at the hardware store, where they're they're with the the mesh net people here right. in Pittsburgh, you know, that idea of the shared uh, internet, shared Wi-Fi uh, in case something goes down. Um, now, now the thing that, that popped up over the last week, of course, um, I know I, I've noticed uh, on the news quote news programs, my John Oliver's and, and, and John Stewart's um, about the uh, protests in Hong Kong that are going on right now, which are, by the way, the most peaceful protests you're ever going to see pretty fantastic um but there's a great article over on the verge about why a messaging app meant for festivals became massively popular during the hong kong protests so of course you know uh the internet's not great especially with that that large of people hell uh internet's not very good if you're in console arena for wwe raw here in pittsburgh Right. There's just like, you know, what, 15,000 people in one place all trying to use their phone. All the towers are jammed. Right. And, and Verizon tries extremely. So Verizon has a lot to do with that service and console. Ooh. They try extremely hard to keep that up and running. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so they, they actually they're, they're, they're talking with some people there about why they're using fire chat. And by the way, I want to, uh, you know, this is a presumably a small Asian woman with a giant, giant freaking phone, um, which I, I think is pretty popular. I think they, they generally get giant phones if, if they're into smartphones. Um, but again, you know, they're protesting. They, they, you know, the Internet's not great with that many people in one place. So they're using this. It, it's handing off with Bluetooth, with Wi-Fi, and they can all connect. Now, it does question, you know, is this, you know, is this secure? You know, yes, the government can uh, tap into it, too. Uh, but still, it's, it's kind of a first step. It's kind of like a, a last resort. 
um, to, to organize in a situation like this. Um, so again, not an intended use of this. It was actually, you know, I think the founders are saying in here that it was made for festivals. It was made for burning mans and everything like that. Um, it doesn't require the internet like like uh, WhatsApp, which is you know pretty popular in some of these other countries. Um, so a pretty cool actual use of of that kind of uh, I guess peer to peer, right? Yeah, and, and one of the nice things. So uh, and it's not one of these things where they just created this app and kind of forgot about it. Mm-hmm. I, I've gotten multiple app updates as well as they continue to kind of update the back end. Yeah. So one of the things I've seen over time is, um, and I, like I said, I, I don't go in there every day or even every week, but recently you, you can now create kind of chat rooms and you can, I think you have the ability to maybe private message, um, but it's also very anonymous. You kind of create your own handle and username and that's it. Hmm. Which is funny because a lot of people in, in, the, in the beginning we're, we're logging in and calling themselves fire chat admin and um, Twitter admin. Like they, they, everyone had these crazy handles because it, it, that's the other thing to keep in mind. It's not really regulated or it doesn't seem monitored in any way, shape or form. But it, 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 it works in certain situations. It sounds like in, in, in a situation where you're at, you're at a burning man or something like there's nobody really to, there's no connection for somebody to really be messing with you anyways. It's just going to be the people there. Right. Right. So saying you're a fire chat admin really doesn't help anybody when you're like, but I'm not on the internet. So, but still, um, awesome. Uh, well, we got a few more stories and we got something from the chat room here, which I am. I don't know about this story wheels, uh, but I want to give a quick shout out uh, to our friends at slice on Broadway, slice on Broadway.com. You can catch them here uh, in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh. Uh, big supporters of, of the podcast, feeding their guests that come in here in studio every week and, and helping me remember to eat because I do have a very long night on Tuesday nights, uh, for instance. Um, but go check them out. They got a new location down at Carnegie PA, great gourmet pizza, uh, pizza by the slice, hence the name. Uh, so, uh, uh, check them out, hit them up on Facebook, on Twitter, on social media, on Instagram, even, and let them know you heard about them on the awesome cast. So, uh, wheels has this one and we were talking about this before the show, cause this always has a bad, this always puts a bad taste in my mouth when I see these stories, especially after that one time chilla, but that one we got, when we got fooled, the one we got fooled and they had Christopher Lloyd and Tony Hawk. Ah, ah. Bastards. Uh, but this one's from IGN News and it says hoverboards are real. I want to believe it. I want to believe it. But uh, it, it, oh, it's it, on Kickstarter too. It's on Kickstarter. Yeah, it's on <laughs> Kickstarter. <laughs> that makes it even better. The only thing that makes me sad is I would have hoped that when they came out with this technology, it would have been relatively inexpensive. I. I if it, then correct me if I'm wrong. They're like ten grand. Mm-hmm. I mean, the end goal is to have a production version of the Hendo ready by October of 2015, which will cost ten thousand dollars U.S. and can be purchased through the company's Kickstarter campaign. Those supplies are extremely limited. Additionally, funds collected from the campaign will go towards specially designed hover park that will host the grand unveiling next year. So, the, the Arcs Pax is apparently the um, the company behind it, I believe, or somebody's very inventive name. I'm not sure. Uh, there's, you, and you see, if you're on video, there's a little bit of a, a video of this. Um, yeah. Oh, and, and for a larger comp- contribution, you can also get the hover and propulsion control through an application on your smartphone. Yeah. I mean, back to the future, 2015, money must have just started growing on trees. It must have, right? If everyone had 10 grand to throw around on a hoverboard. Where is my self, self-drying self jacket, for instance? I could really use those on those rainy nights when I'm shooting football. <laughs> um, you know, it, 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 what, what was uh, the Cubs win a World Series yet? 
I don't know. I don't think that happened. I'm pretty sure that didn't even close to happen. So um, I don't know. But it says, I love the I love the underline to this is hoverboards are real for real this time. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'll believe it when it's like in the Walmart shelves. But um, let's get into some other stories here. Uh, well, one, I thought this was kind of, uh, well, actually, we should get into Apple and Google announcements from this past week. A lot happened there. Um, I, I imagine you you follow pretty closely the Google. It wasn't even, they didn't do an event. It was just a blog post that said, hey, stuff's coming out, right? Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, it kind of, it kind of really caught me by surprise that they would have done it that way. I figured we would have gotten, you know, a big lollipop announcement. Um, Cause we, I think we posted either that I, that night or the day after that. Um, who was on the show last week? Crap. Okay. Okay. That he was right. He actually called it that it was going to be called lollipop. I, I thought they were going to go with another proper candy form. Um, I quickly tweeted that lollipop is, is the new Android because Android is for suckers, but, um, (laughs) (laughs) but that's neither here nor there. Um, the thing that I'm still interested in or, or am more interested in than, than their, than necessarily the, the new six inch phablet phone or the nine inch um, tablet. I, I, I really like their seven inch tablet. I mm-hmm. wish they would have done another seven inch tablet device. Or maybe It really maybe feels we'll... like it feels like they're doing uh, sort of similar to what they're doing at, at Apple where, Hey, here's our new sizes. Our new ones are going to be the new bigger sizes. Uh, Nexus five to the next six, the ne- Nexus nine, as opposed to a Nexus seven. Um, they're at least still selling the Nexus five from last year. Again, yeah, if you want if you want the smaller size, you need to get the older hardware, which I am not a fan of this philosophy. Um, and again, I, I don't think they're they're still selling the Nexus Seven that I've seen on the store, but the, the, now there's a Nexus Nine. So I don't know. I don't know if I would have jumped on a Nexus Nine like this. Um, and it's starting off at three ninety nine. So it's not even the 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 steal. I felt like I got. Um, uh, my Nexus 7 for for 230 a year ago. She's asking how big of a micro SD card do I have in my iPhone? Um, I don't. And in fact, nor do most Google Nexus devices. No, no, they don't. So they're, 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 it's, it's, it's more of your LGs and your, your Samsungs and some of your other devices that are still, still on that micro SD, which don't get me wrong. I, I like the, I like the concept um, I, I think one of the issues is that a lot of things in Android, you have to jailbreak a root to get your apps over there. Um, mm-hmm. And maybe the, the interesting thing that I'm actually really looking forward to in Lollipop, and, and don't get me wrong, I have, I have Android devices. Um, I have the Samsung Galaxy camera, uh, the first gen, the second gen. I have the Android uh, Nexus 7 2013 edition. I have the Motorola Zoom tablet, um, which I'm still kicking from time to time. In fact, I'm using it for a bunch of testing for work right now. You're probably using it more than I'm using that iPad 1, to be honest. Yeah. Well, and I mean, it runs, I think it stopped at 4.1 or 4.2. iOS 5. Yeah. Yeah. It hurts. But it, now it came, don't forget that device came out an easy six months to a year after the, the first iPhone. I think I got that right around the That's time true. I got the iPad two. So yeah. Yeah. Those devices are still, well, the iPad, iPad 2, two just two now stopped yeah. being sold. Yeah. So, so I, I do like Android in a lot of different ways. I just prefer Apple and I'm, I'm still, I'm, I'm actually rooting for, um, for, for windows phone. Um, the other interesting thing I heard is, is that the, the interesting Android borrowed and one of my favorite OSs of all time, web OS, it looks like Android's by or looking at or building a lot of its design on that old card look and feel of web OS. I mean, when I, when I look at Google cards, they remind me exactly 
of the WebOS interface where you kind of flip, just flick them off and, and you're, you're kind of closing an app or you're, or you're closing out some kind of information card. Um, so, so, I mean, I, I think everything has its, has its space, definitely. Certainly. And of course, uh, Lollipop, uh, as announced, um, there was actually a pretty great video of the casting for the new L. <laughs> um, a, you know, with, with uh, <laughs> there was a few on here. Lemon cake, lime, lime key pie. Um, it, it was it was it was pretty entertaining. Uh, so Google with a great sense of humor. Lemon drop. Little kid is a lemon drop. Uh, the sweet search for L is the video. It's a two minute video if you want to go check that out. And uh, I'll actually uh, tweet it out here from the awesome cast uh, uh, Twitter as well. So um, I don't know. We we haven't. It's not released on anything yet except for maybe those new Nexuses that are shipping. Um, so uh, was was there any word on like when we're going to get it on our Nexus devices that we already have, for, for instance? I did not see anything. They did say that it will definitely be out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm I'm sitting tight. One of the big things I think they're doing is they're changing the way that the application, something on the back end, the way the applications work. Um, so it's going to actually speed up a lot of what they're doing, mm -hmm. um, which I, I think the interface is, has come a long way since they implemented Butter. Um, so I'm, I'm looking forward to these, the, this change in the way it has something to do with the way that the, the apps are compiled and their, the runtime is, is run to actually run those applications on the device. Um, my worry is how many apps, if, if, if they're truly changing and getting rid of this old, um, like Davlik or something like that. The way the the way the runtime works, I'm a, I'm a little nervous that how many apps aren't going to work. And I, I think on I think it was on this weekend tech, um, someone brought up the whole Nexus, uh, the nine inch is going to a four by three. It's not going to be the sixteen by nine. So it's going to be like the Surface Pro three and the the iPad um, screen. Yeah, this is the sixteen by nine. Um, Surface Pro 2 and below, and uh, uh, Nexus 7. Um, there was there was enough problems getting applications to render properly on on the on tablets to begin with, and now they're going to completely change the the screen layout. I don't know. It makes me a little nervous and hesitant. I mean, I still, I still, at certain points, feel like I'm, I'm loading i uh, phone apps, uh, just in, in bigend on, on this tablet. You know, I, I think, you know, I don't think that's a fault of, a hundred percent a fault of Android. I think that's developers. Oh yeah, I, mean, I think that's why Google is making. What is it? But What's again, there? like, like if I open up Twitter on a iPad Mini, it feels like an iPad app versus this doesn't feel like an Android tablet app. It just feels like a bigger version of which I would, what I would have gotten on a Nexus phone, for instance. So, and actually, I think it looks nicer on my iPhone, to be completely honest. Um, so, uh, other than that, they also released the Nexus Player. Um, basically, think if you looked at the um, Fire TV, yeah, that's basically it. Um, and, and that's one of the devices I'm also excited about, because this is their third try at at a, at a TV, a connected TV device. So I'm I'm interested to see how this plays out because and it's they're not putting a big push behind it either. It's just like yep, here it is. Here you go. There you go. It, it's probably not going to catch fire like it did with uh, Chromecast, you know, which I think mm -hmm. is still going strong. It, it actually incorporates a lot of the Chromecast features, like you know the the Google Cast they're talk they're calling it now. Um, it does the video game thing much like the Fire TV. Uh, you can get a, a controller for it for, I think it's another $40. It's $40? $40. It's, $40. it's the same. I, from what I heard, yeah, it's 40 bucks. It's the same price as the Kindle or the Fire TV um, controller. The remote looks a lot like um, um, the Kindle or the, yeah, the Fire TV remote. Yeah. One of the things that I'm interested in seeing if Google can pull off, and I think if anyone can do it, it can be Google, 
is unifying the search between all content providers. So if you're familiar with um, iTunes and whatnot, I can search obviously my whole iTunes library, but I'm kind of limited to searching that. But then I can launch Netflix and I can search the Netflix library and then I can launch Amazon Prime and I can search that library. Um, wouldn't it be nice if I could go in and I think Kindle Fire has aspects or the, the Fire TV has aspects of it where I could say, show me all movies with Christopher Lloyd. And it listed all the movies that were available on Netflix, all the Prime movies, all the Google movie content. Bring in all, I mean, Google, obviously, this is what they do. Um, I, I, think it, I think it could be really, really beneficial, and that device would instantaneously be in every room in my house if that was the case. Because I have, I have a large video archive Obviously, some of the recent movies that I that I purchased via iTunes, I'd be kind of out of luck on. Yeah. Just being able to get that overall content. I mean, think about HBO to go, their library. Think of all the content at Hulu. You have you have access to all this content, but be able to be able to find the content you want to watch or with a, a certain Which name or really certain... wasn't that the promise of Google TV initially? Yeah. Well, and then don't forget, Google TV had the first one was that Logitech. It was made by Logitech, and I think it was mm -hmm. the, like a review. Yeah. And it had an HDMI pass through. Yep. And you could, it would actually give you. Real Isn't it funny? Isn't that kind of what, what, what Xbox is doing now? Xbox, you can look up a show and it'll tell you which services through Xbox it's available on. Yes. Like, and that's I get, nice. I get, the, I get the same feature um, from TiVo. Mm hmm. Um, which I actually really, really like. And, and TiVo does a really good job of making recommendations. So if I'm watching Gotham, it'll say, you may like The Flash on CW, mm -hmm. but then it'll actually, it knows what's available based on what I've signed into on the box too. So it'll go through Prime and Netflix and whatnot. And it'll, it'll give me recommendations based on my, my viewing history but it won't try to upsell me to something that I don't have access to. Hey, I want to catch up with uh, some of the stuff from the chat room here. Um, first of all, uh, Mike Allen, who's been doing the notes and tweets for us here all night, uh, he let us know that the Cubs won the World Series in 1908. So just <laughs> so we know. Um, also, uh, Wheels is saying in the chat that Nexus 7 is going to get the update on November 3rd. So I'm going to be looking forward to that. Um, and I had one more note here. Oh, oh, uh, Chachi is saying Android is for nerds, Apple is for every man. Every man? Every man yeah. with every man with a full wallet. Yeah, and I mean I think both <laughs> both platforms could be for nerds, both Well, I mean I, I again I go to, go back to like okay, uh, by the way, he he picked the uh, LG G3. I got to play with it a little bit over the weekend. It's, it's a nice phone. It is really <coughs> Excuse me, really nice phone. Uh, a beautiful screen. Um, he can change TV channels with it. It has an infrared. Apparently, it does. We were in sheets, and he was uh, uh, turning a couple of them on. So, <laughs> so that's a Monday. So, what's that? He said November third's a Monday, so I'm gonna have to make sure I take my Nexus to work. Me yeah, me too. Me too. Um, but uh, side note, hey, the, the so talk of Google stuff. I noticed Glass uh, is supposed to have notifications on it now. Like from your phone, you know the thing I wanted be when Android Wear came out. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, this is my only pair of glasses, and I'm not ready to strap my Google Glass to it again yet. <laughs> so <laughs> I need to get a. Uh, I'm finally Rob De La Creta. If you're if you still listen to this, I'm finally going to order that pair of glasses from uh, from uh, Zenny Optical. So, um, anyways. I'm sorry. Where were we going with this? Um, well, okay. You an infrared. So, and that's one of the things that I really give the reference. It's interesting because you don't see a lot of reference hardware with that infrared, but I see a lot of devices with the infrared piece on it, mm -hmm. and I really, really appreciate that, especially as a person that that enjoys a connected home, and we use our iPhones to control the TV, but it actually has to then connect to a little hub that's hidden under the couch. Um, it connects over our Wi-Fi, and then you can 
control anything. And it's, it, it uses the same Harmony technology from Logitech. So if you hit watch TV, it knows to tune the tuner and to turn on the Xbox and switch TV around and turn on the receiver, all of that kind of stuff. You, there's a simple button on it built in that says watch Blu-ray and there's a button that says um, watch Apple TV. Um, I, I really like that. And I think there's a really good remote app called Shermote, Shermote, S-U-R-E-M-O-T-E, I think, um, for Android. That I, I've actually looked at potentially because Logitech is always behind with that update for that piece of hardware. I'm looking for alternatives. And I, I do have a couple tablets that have the infrared. So I'm thinking about putting a, a Android tablet in the living room at all times that's just kind of a media remote. And, and allows you to to do some basic stuff, either interacting with the house and or if you just want to quickly log on to browse the web or whatnot. Um, it, 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 they really kind of unveil a lot with Android. Uh, kind of, there was a new ad campaign about uh, Android. Uh, you know that that kind of pushes the idea of it, it being different and and. Uh, uh, you know, being it's kind of their think different commercial. Have, have you seen this? Which the, the um, Google commercial? Yeah, the Android commercial. Yeah, I have. I I I heard. I actually listened to the audio on it. I didn't actually see the video. Well, it's just that audio applied to like footage like this, basically, of uh, their Android One phones and, and and all kinds of different devices. Um, you know. It, it does feel like Android, uh, you know, we kind of saw this when they were announcing their Wear and their Auto, and they only had the Android One, which is kind of like an accessible Android phone. Um, they're all the same, but different. So is is this them finally kind of reining in um, what, what developers are doing with their Samsungs and their LGs and everything? Or is this just like their program? Like this is them kind of expanding their kind of uh, Nexus, you know, ideal device kind of culture. I would think it's more of them expanding, but also saying very eloquently that, hey, we can do this too. Mm -hmm. It's not just Apple that can do all this, this nice video and this nice, uh, uh, quick posts to Instagram and poster, and you look at you you look at the what are they what does Apple call it? It's it's not my story, but um, what's their whole campaign? Oh uh, my! What's your what's your idea? Yeah, like like that that whole thing. I think I think is is overplayed a bit. I mean, yeah, you can do a lot of what they're doing on any device. Um, Apple obviously has a better way to market that. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think this is Google's way of saying, yes, we can do all that too. Let's hop over to Apple here because they had their big announcement. They actually had an announcement. They didn't just press release this and blog it like like Android apparently did. Um, But of course, we got the new iPad, iPad Air 2. Um, They said you could stack two of these iPads together and it's about as thick as the first iPad. Well, and, and here's the thing that got me today when, when I was actually at an Apple event in Pittsburgh, um, and the guy said, it's thinner than the iPhone 6. What? Yeah. What? And that's what, that's, uh, wait a minute, I'm sorry. It's thinner than the 6 Plus, and this, maybe the same thickness as the 6. Hmm. Irregardless, it's, it's darn thin. I'm worried about bending this thing. I'm not necessarily worried about bending it because nine times out of 10, my, I mean, I'm not putting my device in my pocket. I'm not putting my iPhone in my pocket. And typically when it's in a bag, it's in there between other objects, typically other tablets. So you look down on my, on my, I don't even have an iPad in front of me. I have two surface tablets. (laughs) sitting here he has a collection um but but the biggest things of, of course uh they upgraded the camera better better camera so you're gonna have more people with their awkward 
uh, you know, this hold in front of them at wrestling shows that I've seen. Um, they have a touch ID. Cool. You know, uh, I think that's that's definitely something that was missing. Uh, um, probably that's probably going to be very significant for uh, some corporate use case. Right. And so the corporate use case on that. So we've we've been we've been mulling over what we're going to do around this. So the corporate use case fits in extremely well. When you have a single device allocated to a single employee. Yes. When you get into and we have, I would actually say upwards of 80 percent of our devices are shared single device shared by multiple employees, um, we would more than likely disable the fingerprint sensor on those devices other than for demoing our products that leverage the fingerprint sensor. Hmm. But Apple Pay was the big, well, not necessarily on the iPad for me, but that was one of their other big announcements, which I actually set up a credit card with today but then didn't make it to starbucks to actually test it out but that's what i thought i'm excited about i thought starbucks was simply doing it through their app are they yeah i thought there were ones that weren't jumping completely on board with it like like you can't just use the straight apple pay you still have to go into their app and use their system but does it leverage apple pay uh i think not the same ways that the other ones do okay so hey yeah. i got to use my eden park app today your Eaton Park app? What does that do? Uh, there's coupons in there. Coupons. Um, uh, it was one of those where we were sitting at lunch where I Eaton Park and I looked down at my phone and that little icon pops up in the corner and say, hey, you have an Eaton Park app on here. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, I do have an Eaton Park app on here. Because, I mean, I've, I've grabbed apps because now, like, Wendy's has an app. Burger King has an app. But I never think to look at them before I go to either one of them until it's too late and there might be a coupon I could use. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of like that feature or nagging as some people may want, may see it as, um, when, for people that feel like it's nagging, you can, there's, there's an option you can turn that off. And yeah. It's extremely always. easy to turn off. I would think that people would want that type of information just in time and, and to be let known that there is something and it does let you know even if you don't have the app installed it lets you know there is an app for you to get right so if i'm there and i didn't have an eden park app installed it, it would prompt me to go get it which is right now, now now eden park doesn't have to put little tent cards on every on every table taking up space saying hey we have an app go download it mm-hmm. and here's a qr code that you'll probably never use actually <laughs> actually they did and and they, they 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 gave you like some kind of coupon i mean if you signed up by a certain date I don't okay. think I ended up using the coupon. Mm. I think I forgot about it um, because I didn't use the app after it got. Yeah. Anyways, uh, back to Apple. Uh, they announced that, of course. And they, they also have the OMG. It's a 5K Retina iMac. Are you excited? Uh, like, I'm going to be able to afford this thing. Uh, but <laughs> it's kind of like. Hey, the, doesn't it start at the same price as your Pro? Yeah. Uh, it starts at 2500 i believe yeah so that's like a that's a, that's a oh no oh no they're they're wow that's a pretty interesting animation they have on there um but this is one of those things where um and i've noticed this you know it's definitely not the i, mean, I got written a macbook pro and i'm already like not taking up I'm a quarter of the screen editing hd video right mm-hmm. um and actually there's a little I don't know if you can even see that on the video, though. Um, there's a little marker there. It's Yeah, it's like a postage stamp, and that's HD. That's what you're watching on your 42-inch TV in your living room, right? And this is five times that. Um, it's a powerful little thing, that's for sure. This is cheaper, or about the same price, as some 5K displays that Dell's putting out on here. Well, and that's one of the things that, that I did hear a lot about was that that a lot of people would probably opt in to this just by based on the mere fact that it is the same price as a lot of the other displays. We know Apple doesn't skimp on their displays. Mm-hmm. But, oh, by the way, they're throwing in pretty much a built-in computer with the display. The, hey. I'm interested to... I, I, I actually want to run down to the Apple store some sometime soon to actually 
just look at how nice the display actually looks. Uh, the Retina, the Retina 5K uh, starts at twenty four ninety nine. They still have models of the IMAX starting at ten ninety nine. Um, so I, don't know, I, I paid about two thousand for my Retina MacBook Pro, but I needed you know the right amount of RAM and everything like that in it, um, and it was a refurb actually. Uh, and I'm wondering, geez, that 5K, does that even include <laughs> that? Wait, it starts at $24.99. That's still with an i5. Well, this is one of the things that, that we've actually been talking about uh, where I work is that the when we talk about i3, i5, i7, and, and obviously talking about today's Bay Trail, um, and then looking at even the Atom-based processors of today, when you look at the current Atom processor, it's actually the equivalent of close to an i3 two years ago. Hmm. But the interesting thing is, is the price point. So, so if you were looking, if you're looking at a lot of the technology, something like a current current i5 of today is actually the i7 of like yesteryear. So you can actually, like, for instance, I can actually do pretty darn well on a dual core i7, which that's one of the, the one thing, the one thing that, that I can't wait to see when they come out with actual speed tests. Because one of the things that really bummed me out was Apple used to kind of make their bottom of the barrel actually like the mid to high end on, on a lot of other equipment like Dell and, and whatnot, unless you went crazy with one of the Dell Dell crazy workstations. Um, but now it seems like their low end hardware is actually could be somewhat low end, okay. which, okay. which kind of makes me sad. Are you talking about specifically the Mac mini? That so, they announced? So, so the Mac mini, um, the base Mac Pro, you, I don't think you can get a quad core on, uh, or the Mac MacBook Pro, um, you can't get a quad core on, um, and that's why I think the Mac Mini. You, that's why you're not seeing the quad core, is because the it's all based on that bottom end Mac Pro. Now I'm skeptical because I'm looking at some Mac Minis for doing Google Hangout for some clients. But did they do for Google Hangout to do HD? You need to have a logical quad core CPU. Am I am I in HD? Uh, yeah, I think you are. Yeah, and I'm on a dual core. Okay, I think I think it was popping up when I was looking at you before. Yeah, I'm HD because it it gives me the like if I go into the settings, it actually says. Mm-hmm. Like I can, I can change my my current resolution, and it currently has me at HD. So, and what what, um, what 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 kind of machine are you on? I'm on a mid 2011 MacBook Air dual core i7. Oh, okay, okay. So it's an it's an old processor, and I only have four gig of RAM. The 1.8 gigahertz. It's an and, and the one thing that bums me out of this is. The mid-2011 MacBook Air was one of the first devices with Bluetooth 4 and Bluetooth LE. And because of that, my Bluetooth isn't powerful enough, at least that's what they're claiming, um, to do handoff. Oh, no. So I can do, I can do, um, and it's mainly the Bluetooth chip. It's, it has nothing to do from what I've heard about the actual processor. It has more to do with battery life. Um on the actual laptop itself. I'm kind of curious. I have not tried handoff yet. As the other thing, Yosemite came out last Wednesday. Well, that's Thursday. Yeah. That's Thursday, Thursday evening. Um, and uh, I, I just got the, I guess with 8.1, you finally get the handoff that it will do actual text messages, not just your iMessages. So that's part of continuity. You don't have part to of continuity. Do okay. handoff for that. Uh, this is where I get confused on which things which. But for instance, like when we were doing Zim earlier, my my mm-hmm. confirmation did come as a text message to my iMessage on my on my laptop sitting right yes. here. So it's all connected now. Um, I'm getting my Google Calendar text messages on my on my computer popping up now. Now I had been already getting calls and you know through FaceTime, like land call regular calls are coming through the FaceTime on here. 
I've I've ordered Slice on Broadway from my iPad. <laughs> nice. Nice. And, and it works it works great because like you're you pass the menu around on the iPad and then you grab it and you the hit thing, the thing, you know, I've been tempted because Hangout, they 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 joined together uh Google Voice with Hangouts. And I got to the, like, there's a, there, there's the dialer on here and I've been wanting to try, just make a call with mm-hmm. hangout and see, see how that goes. Um, but I don't know, like, what, is it just the speaker phone? Am I holding it up? What's going to happen here? Yeah. The iPad, obviously it was the speaker phone. It's just the speaker phone. Cause there's no, there's no, there's no speaker up here or anything mm-hmm. like that. Um, that's, that's incredible. You know, you don't even need a phone to do phone things anymore. So, um, the other thing, uh, other incredible thing that with the, with the iMac, I'm sorry, with the, uh, iPad, iPad mini two, by the way, um, apparently the SIM card is going to be compatible with everybody. And that's in the iPad air two as well. That's both. Isn't that what I said? You said mini. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. The air two, uh, is is it, I think mini three both do that, don't they? Oh, okay. Uh, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure if the mini does as well. Mini was a little bit disappointing because it's not much of an upgrade. Technically same chip. Mm -hmm. They, uh, I don't think they even updated the camera all that much, but they put touch ID. It was the biggest thing. Yeah, it's, it's, but yeah, I'll tell you what, they, they kind of hit that broad spectrum now though, right? They have the iPad. The first iPad mini starts at two forty nine. Mm-hmm. And you go for base. This is all base model, 16 gig, um, 249 all the way up through 499, and pretty much what 50 dollar increments. So you can get in in a number of price points. The interesting thing I thought was is they kept they kept the air they kept the air around. Yeah, they finally got rid of the iPad 2 that had been lying around at that 399 mark. I and wouldn't. I they, wouldn't mind they, paying three ninety nine for last year's iPad, mm-hmm. not the three years ago iPad. Right. Well, I think they did that in the spring too. They switched to the four, mm-hmm. so the, the two got they got rid of the two in the spring. Had the four in the air. The air was launched in the fall of twenty thirteen. Um, but they were in the, in the spring twenty fourteen. They wanted everything to have the. Um, lightning connector so they ditched the two and and actually i think that's one of the main reasons they kept the two around for so long was because so many schools bought the two and bought tons of accessories so think about it they're all 30 pin connector accessories Hmm. and then that way they have a replacement without having any growing pains for the lightning and Mm -hmm. uh, but now all those schools are going to get that iPad Air or or maybe iPad Minis. They have a broad spectrum there. I think that opens it up greatly for them. I mean, that's, that's you know, again, you're looking at the Nexus 7 was around a, what do I say, a $230, um, uh, you know, two, $230. 250 for an iPad's not that bad, although this is the equivalent of probably, what, an iPhone 4S? Is it running the 4S? I can't remember. It's an A5. Yeah, well, it would be yeah, it would be the the iPad four, mm-hmm. which would have been oh geez, no, it would have been the I, iPhone five, not four S. And don't forget, they always do that whatever the number is X chip. Yes, of course, of course. <laughs> That's a little bit different. But. Um, from there, um, Yosemite, of course, is out. Like we mentioned, um, no, no big problems that I've heard about. I've I've been pretty happy with it. The one interesting thing that you'll want to know, um, especially for you, um, if you were part of the beta program, which I think you were, I am. Um, in one of the sub menus and settings, they are going to keep you on the beta program and you will be auto enrolled. Now, obviously it won't automatically install, Oh, um, but you will be auto enrolled in any future beta program. So you'll see them in the app store for download. Um, obviously it'll be up to you if you want to install them. I can't remember where that setting went. Um, well, that's cool. 
Yeah. And even so I, I and, thought that was pretty neat. And even like in my history, it still shows like I have uh, I, OS X Yosemite. But of course, I did download on my other computer that wasn't in the beta program uh, in my office. Um, but and it also shows OS X uh, Yosemite beta four as a separate download. Mm hmm. So um, cool. That's nice to know. Uh, so <laughs> I can make that decision in uh, whenever they next summer when they do the open beta for whatever that's going to be. So. Well, and I think what you're, but I, what I think you're, what you're going to see is, um, so it's in the app store settings. There's a section in the middle that says your computer is set to receive pre-release software update seeds. I don't think that it's just going to be OS 10 beta. Hmm. I think anything that they op option for people to beta, you may actually then be able to see that pre-release software um, and play around with it. Nice. All right, let's touch on a couple of things. Hey, let's go to some uh, TV stuff. First of all, HBO Go saying that they're going to go over the top. They're going to uh, kind of let you have HBO Go without a cable subscription. Although a little funny the way they're saying it, it sounds like they might still be partnering with, uh, with ISPs. Well, I mean, yeah, I, I would understand that because so here's if they don't partner, I'm sure here's the fear. Um, you'll see bandwidth limitations on your ISP. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure they're going to try to partner or and I'll tell you what, HBO Go um, becomes. Uh, I don't have to carry a cable subscription for it. Um, I will quickly go back to uh, being a cord cutter. Yeah, yeah, it gives you less reason. I mean, and that's for those series. Because do you really get HBO Go for the movies anymore? Isn't that what yeah. Netflix is for? To a point, obviously, HBO Go is going to have the movies usually prior to them being available on Netflix. Yeah. Um, and I think HBO Go, they're back catalog of movies kind of changes over time, much like Netflix does. So you'll see movies that were on there last month that are on there this month and that, and they, they rotate in and out their catalog. So, um, I think it's, it's, it's worth having the two of them. I keep sliding to the side. Sorry. Um, but no, I, I, I could definitely see carrying both mm -hmm. not, and not just for the series. And, and, and in related news, CBS becomes the first major network to launch an internet TV first uh, service. Uh, this, this is this is the group that doesn't that isn't on Hulu. Like none of their major it, first run shows are on Hulu, but now you have a five ninety nine service through them. Um, on top of that, it's going to have back catalog of certain shows. Apparently, not something. Apparently, uh, uh, notably missing is the Big Bang Theory. Big Bang Theory, which is not currently offering prior seasons. They have old shows, which you know a lot of them you've seen on other things like like Star Trek, Twin Peaks. Um, I think I saw Cheers in there, Family Ties. Um, you are also going to be able to stream uh, if you're in certain markets, including Pittsburgh, uh, also including like Sacramento, Denver, Baltimore, Minneapolis, Detroit. There's a, there's a good list of some of the major markets in here: New York, Los Angeles, Chicago, Philly. Um, the only thing they will not be able to stream is the NFL. So it doesn't solve that problem for you. Although this is still talking about over the air. This is access to over the air and back catalog kind of stuff. Yeah. And, and I have access to over the air. I mean, I have, I have 24 channels that come in crystal clear over the air with a TiVo DVR that works over the air. I can record four channels simultaneously. Um, I, I have zero issues over the air with local <laughs> channel. Uh, to me, it's, it, it's two, two things, uh, actually three right now. Um, and maybe four USA showtime, HBO root sports during hockey season. So those would be my like four a la carte type subscriptions that I would want to be able to get. 
I'd love, I would love if I could, if, if I could pay $5 more a month to the WWE network just to watch raw live. I'd be in. That's like my last hang up. Mm-hmm. Um, but no, I, uh, and Alex is saying in the chat room, finally, he pay, he could pay five ninety nine to watch uh, all the episodes of Two and a Half Men. <laughs> this is my problem. I don't. There's nothing on here worth watching to me. If this came out a year ago when I was trying to watch the rest of How I Met Your Mother, I'd be into it. Five ninety nine, piece of cake. That's cheaper than what I paid on Amazon. Uh, did you purchase them or what? I purchased the last season. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For you know, episode by episode, you get the series discount. Mm-hmm. We just they change things up, and now you have to buy the season in advance on Amazon. So that price tag for The Walking Dead means I'm not doing a lot of series from now on, guys. <laughs> that's, that's that made that a lot harder to do. Um, to drop forty bucks on a series versus that's eh, under three bucks an episode. Okay, I can deal with that. You know, it's a psychological thing. Mm-hmm. So that depends on how many episodes there. I, I actually that's how I was doing Walking Dead. Mm-hmm. For quite some time, I was I was ordering, and it was through iTunes, the series on there. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the it was always like, nice before because you could do the season pass, and actually, our Doctor Who for the season is still on this, where you you order the season pass. They only charge you when the episode comes out, but you get a discount because you're on a season pass, and it automatically buys it. Okay. So now it's nope. You got to give us all the money. All the money's now. Mm-hmm. So I was actually tempted to just buy it episode by episode, just to, you know, so I don't have a big chunk. So mm-hmm. it, it makes it a little harder. Definitely makes that that makes you think about that choice a little easier. Well, so. I'm actually making an honest effort to not pick up any more series as they fall off those channels. Yes, um, I kind of want to get myself out of that mentality. Um, like I watched, like I said, a couple series on USA. Um, you you are a California. You're going through the Californication back catalog. Yep, I'm on the last season. That's getting a little tough on the last season, but yeah. uh, I'm, I'm, but I was I'm I was through it. Huge on that when it started seven years ago. Um, so th- that's one thing that that got me back to cable was being able to get those the night they came out. Kind mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, anything else that really kind of fills in the gaps. Like the only, the only other than stuff that uh, involves uh, superheroes that are all on Hulu anyways. Um, the only thing I've really gotten into, uh, we tried bad judge, but again, it's on Hulu. You know, mm-hmm. I, if I hear about a new series like elementary, I'd love to try out, but it's on CBS. And that means I'm not watching it until mm-hmm. they put all the episodes on, a Hulu or a, a uh, Netflix after, you know, years after it came out, which I'm fine with that. I'm cool with that. You know, um, it's not something I'm really that dire to, to try out, you know. Now, if the flash was on CW and CW wasn't one of those, uh, you know, Hulu friendly networks, I'd think about it. But that's where I like, I really like the TiVo over the air stuff. I know it's, probably a couple bucks a month. And and now that they're, they have just the device that only does over the air, it doesn't do anything cable related. Um, to me, that's the perfect opportunity for those types of devices to really take a foothold because I can get the CW over the air. I can get ABC, NBC, CBS, mm-hmm. Fox. You know, Alex is in the chat room. He's saying, uh, waiting for FX to get their stuff together and make a full episodes, not require a cable account login. Guys, a lot of it. A lot of those are not going to change. Yeah, they, I don't think Fox doesn't seem like they're they're really interested in in that kind of open subscription model. No, they're not. Um, and I understand what they're getting at. They're saying they want you to pay for having TBS, Fox, FX. You know, it, it, that's you know kind of the HBO ish model where it's like, no, you we're getting our money through the subscribers. You know, uh, we're not. It, and they could serve ads and let you just see it through the app. But they're not going to because obviously they're going to they want multiple streams of income coming in for that. So uh, until they sell something to like a, I mean, the league, the league is something I'm going to watch. I saw last season popped up on Netflix. Uh, I'll get around to it, you know. Well, and, and I think that's it's one of the things that if, if they move the model correctly, um, I think one of the things that different companies are seeing now, too, is, is that they're losing the revenue stream from the DVD sales so the full season dvd right 
not many people are buying those because they but are, I did, are... But I do have full seasons four and five of Walking Dead that's going to be sitting on my Amazon account forever. Mm -hmm. I have the last full season of Doctor Who. I have uh, the last, what, two seasons of, of Doctor Who, actually. Uh, or last season of How I Met Your Mother, you know. Um, you know, these weird oddball things that were like, well, we picked up that, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's interesting. So now I have this, like, digital DVD box set collection going on on Amazon. You know, on top of the random movies that aren't in Ultraviolet, like, like Thor 2 and Captain America, for some reason, aren't on Ultraviolet. You know, so I have to get them on Amazon or iTunes. So I'll use Amazon because I actually want to watch it on other devices. As much as I like Apple devices, I don't like iTunes. Although music, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in music with that, but I can port it over to Google Music easily, too. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. Anyways. Uh, by the way, uh, Alex says he just got done watching the IT, IT crowd on Netflix. I think anybody that's into this show is definitely going to like that, by the way. Oh, it's phenomenal. It, the it's one great. thing is, does Netflix yet have their that last episode? They did like a reunion episode in the UK. Uh, not that I'm aware of. That always okay. gets weird because uh, I, I think The Office had all those. But um, and uh, Netflix, uh, John Juggalo John's also getting Netflix for the new Marvel shows coming up. So mm -hmm. there you go. Hey, man, if you're uh, I'm a, I'm a cord cutter. So uh, I got my Netflix su subscription. I got my Hulu subscription. So I'm getting my Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and that new Marvel stuff coming out. I'm good to go. I bought season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. too, because I didn't know it was going to be on Hulu. I don't know why I didn't even think about it. But anyways, um, on that note, we've been at this for a bit, Chilla. I think it's time for us to wrap up. Let's take a look at some stuff coming up. What is coming up? Well, uh, our friends at Ohio Linux Fest is actually this weekend, I believe. Um, yeah, the 24th through the 26th over there in Columbus, Ohio. I'm not going to mess it up this week. Uh, Columbus, PA. We found out somebody uh, who is it? Was it was a Carla Swank that, that that she's from or visited near Columbus, PA? When we found that out last week. Yeah, I, I think so. Spoke. I think you're right about that. Um, saw that on the twitters. Uh, it's over at the Greater Columbus Convention Center in downtown Columbus. You can go check out more information from that about that at ohiolinux.org. Uh, please go check out a couple episodes here on awesomecast.net. Uh, we talked with uh, a couple people involved with the Ohio Linux Fest. Uh, we had some good conversations about that, open source, how Linux is everywhere, and what's going on in Ohio, in uh, Columbus, Ohio in general, as far as like really kind of picking up a uh, uh, business out there. Also, I believe this week, let me check the details uh great group i i, I it, it kills me that i never make it to this anymore uh, refresh pittsburgh october uh, this thursday october 23rd uh they always have great speakers out there this week they're going to be having a talk about uh digital duct tape for nonprofits, enabling innovation and creative outcomes on a shoestring but uh, Jeffrey Inchko and web development in uncontrolled environments. Good stuff about design. Good stuff about customers. Good stuff about freelancing. Um, it really just kind of updates your skills if you're into any of those kind of creative fields. Um, so go check that out. I believe it's uh, Refresh. Just look up Refresh Pittsburgh. You'll you'll find all the information on that. Uh, tickets are free. You can still get them. There are seven tickets left. So get on that if you're interested in that. Um, and it's actually going to be held over at... Where is it? I think in the south side. Is that Al oh, Alda Alpha Lab. Go check that out. Also, uh, Open Coffee Club happening tomorrow at uh, Alpha Lab as well. Go look, look up Open Coffee Club on Facebook for information on that. Life Shell still in their Kickstarter campaign. I want to give a shout out to them. Uh, another Alpha Lab company we talked about a few months ago, had an interview with actually. Uh, they're at 42000 of their $70,000 goal. You can pick up their Whistler case for, uh, I believe it's $57. Uh, oh, they are there. That's the one we talked to actually. They got 13 days to go. Go help them out with that um, and find out more about what they're trying to do to keep Keep the lady safe uh, with her iPhones. Um, also, another go to yetjagoff.com. He's still running with his uh, petition to get yet jagoff in or jagoff in the Webster's dictionary. Uh, yetjagoff.com. He's also going to be. Did we announce it yet? Did we announce the thing with him yet? Never mind. There's some news about that you'll be hearing about very soon. And of course, Podcamp Pittsburgh coming up uh, November. 22nd, 23rd. 
thank you. Uh, PodcampPittsburgh.com. We actually had a uh, discussion about Bold Pittsburgh, the online magazine in our spotlight feature over there. PodcampPittsburgh.com. Uh, we'll be around. We'll pr- uh, probably do a live awesome cast from there like we usually do. Uh, working out the details of that right now. Chill, you'll be around, right? Let me know. Let me know the details on that because depending on when is and I'm sorry. When's Thanksgiving? Is it the following? The weekend, weekend after. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then I. I we're just... we're not crazy enough to do a Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> what are you talking about? We'll talk about that a little bit too. So go check that out, Podcast uh, Pittsburgh. Um, and with that, anything anything I missed that you uh, have on the radar, sir? The only thing that's Microsoft's having a cloud announcement. They're always I'm having sure. a new announcement. Jeez, I heard I listened to the Windows Weekly people about their horrible, horrible experience going out for a 45 minute press presser with no real information. And they couldn't even get the uh, the release of Windows 10, the technical preview, because they're on a damn plane on the way home uh, the next morning. They couldn't even hand them a disc to try it out. Uh, wow. Well, if you if you hand someone a, and, and I'm going to if you hand someone a disc nowadays, are they really going to be able to try it out? Oh, good. <laughs> you know, uh, they updated. Uh, apparently, the the promoter for the wrestling group I, I worked with this weekend updated his computer, and all of the uh, wrestlers bring their music on CD half the time. Mm-hmm. And they're like, "Well, nope, this isn't happening." <laughs> <laughs> so there's some nice slim lines you can find for like twenty, thirty bucks USB. At least you could rip them. That's what I do. That's what I do. That's what I got hooked up to the Mac Mini upstairs. I actually had to buy a second one. I wore the first one out. Oh. Yeah. So, had a bu- and I, I, I just bought the lowest price model, and it was exactly the same model as the first one I had. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's an HP. It might be. Yeah. I think it's giving different letters than the first one did. Anyways, uh, with that, guys, please check us out at awesomecast.net. You can join us here Tuesdays at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time at live.circuitronmedia.com. On Twitter, we're at AwesomeCast. Look up AwesomeCast on the Google Plus and the Facebooks. Uh, we're uh, putting out uh, uh, conversations and, 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 and stuff all week long, uh, news items that we're interested in. And uh, you can please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, Stitcher, Spreaker, and iHeartRadio. And a big thanks to Michael Allen at Mike Allen PR. He's back this week guys doing the tweets and the notes all night long and let us know about the cubbies world series <laughs> with that thank you to our awesome awesome chat room that's been uh dropping all all night uh spoiler windows 9 is a cloud-based os what that's windows not, 9 doesn't exist it's it's it's, it's a vapor <laughs> it's, it's it's the true vaporware in the cloud um <laughs> including alex wheels juggalo john chachi with his lg g3 and everything else um thank you awesome chat room you've been our awesome audience have an awesome week This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Do you like professional wrestling? Want your discussions? No holds barred. Check out wrestlingmayhemshow.com for all the wrestling podcast flavor you can handle.